Welcome to my talk. I am Richard Biener. I'm working in the SUSE Labs toolchain team, and I've been uh, at SUSE for almost 20 years and working on GCC for more than 20 years. And today I will talk about compute offloading to GPUs or compute accelerators um, when you're using GCC and doing the offloading with using OpenMP. So first, what is OpenMP? Maybe you already know. Uh, OpenMP, when OpenMP was introduced, uh, there wasn't anything like graphics card accelerators or even Zim ZIMD and vectorization, but there were threads. So originally, OpenMP targeted threading on uh, bigger uniform memory machines like the old IREX machines, which had lots of memory, like uh, a few gigabytes. And the, the nice thing of OpenMP is that it is, it's portable. It's portable across languages. And it's, it's very easy to use. If you ever have used POSIX pthreads, then you know it's not difficult to use it. But, well, it's a little bit of work to actually parallelize anything in your code. For example, for the pthreads, you have to put all the, the worker into a separate function because you can't just offload a lexical block in your program to another, to another thread. There are nowadays programming paradigms which make that uh, possible, like with coroutines or fancy stuff like that. But your favorite programming language, C, doesn't have any of that. I'm just assuming your favorite programming language is C, of course. <laughs> so here I have uh, written a small example. Let's see if that now works. Ah, nice. Uh, so this is, this is a simple uh, compute kernel which uh, computes uh, a, a vector addition and scaling. And you can actually parallelize that by just writing in front of the loop uh, the C pragma OpenMP parallel for, and that will then launch as many threads as there are and uh, run that in, in parallel. And that's everything you need to do. Of course, you need to tell the compiler that, well, I'm not no longer programming pure C, but I'm also targeting OpenMP, which means you build and link with a dash F OpenMP, and then you get a parallelized program. Of course, only this loop is then parallelized. And you can constrain like on how many threads your program uses uh, with, did I press the wrong button? Yes. Uh, with uh, environment, like setting the OpenMP uh, num threads environment variable. And there's also a runtime associated where you can query how many threads you got associated if you then need to do fancy stuff. But it's really if you have uh, some compute, and you want to have that parallel, you can really just write OpenMP parallel for in front of it. Uh, then, um, over the years, OpenMP got more features. For example, uh, all modern processors support some sort of uh, single instruction multiple data uh, execution style, so vectorization. And you can do the same with OpenMP. You can tell the compiler, please execute this on the vector instruction set. And then it will vectorize this. So what's the difference? If you like compile your program with dash 03, the compiler will anyway vectorize all my code. Uh, the difference is that if you put the pragma OpenMP zimmed, before the loop, you tell the compiler that there's no data dependence that would prevent vectorization. For example, I, I'm passing in here general pointers to y and x, and if they actually point to data that overlaps in, uh, in, in a bad way, like uh, then, then executing this uh, on a ZIMT machine will produce different results than if not. But with this pragma, you basically guarantee that this doesn't happen. Otherwise, the compiler has to insert runtime checks, 
which it also does in some cases if it thinks it's profitable, to double check that the result is exactly the same whether it's vectorized or not. But uh, with the OpenMP pragma, you basically tell the compiler it's okay to do that, and it makes it easier for the compiler to vectorize. Um, when you're just using the ZIMD parallelization of OpenMP, you don't need any OpenMP runtime. Uh, when you just specify dash f OpenMP ZIMD instead of dash open, uh, f OpenMP, then you basically restrict the OpenMP extension to the uh, single instruction multiple data subset. <coughs> and of course, one nice feature of, of OpenMP is that you can compose all the features. So you can compose the uh, thread level parallelism, parallelism and the zimt uh, level parallelism. So you get threads and vectorization uh, on the same loop. So basically you can exercise all your CPU cores with all their facility at the same time. And it's still uh, only a single line of source code you have to add for that. So what kind of features are in OpenMP? I of course showed only very simple example but uh, OpenMP has, um, has primitives for synchronous and asynchronous operation. <coughs> it has atomics and synchronization. Of course, when you have threads, you eventually have to share data between threads and have to exchange data between threads. You can, you can um, basically define very complex flows of uh, information with OpenMP tasking. <clears throat> Basically, you can write multiple loops and say, well, um, execute them asynchronously, but this loop depends on the result of that, and so on, and so it will schedule the work as it finishes automatically in the threads. And it's also similarly simple. <clears throat> and of course, you can combine uh, all the, the features, <clears throat> which is the, the threading, the ZIMD, and also the device offloading, which I will come to next. There's uh, language support for C++ and Fortran defined in the standard, but it's, it's not necessarily limited to that, so I don't know if, for example, Rust allows OpenMP pragmas and supports that, or any other language like, Open, like Python, maybe Python has OpenMP support. Well, in principle, nothing would prevent that, but the OpenMP standard only concerns itself with C, C++, and Fortran, for the moment, at least. <clears throat> so what, what does it not do? So it does not parallelize across your cluster. So it only works on a single hardware thing with basically shared memory. It's shared memory parallelism up to the extent for the offloading, because your graphics card has separate memory but it's designed to work on the single machine without uh, inter-host operation. There's uh, MPI for that, for example, which can be combined with OpenMP. So now the, the talk is about OpenMP offloading of compute to a separate device. And in that case, the separate device is, is your GPU in your laptop, for example, or in the desktop. <coughs> or the compute accelerator that is installed in your HPC supercomputer. In your personal HPC supercomputer, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and it, it, it may even work on your mobile phone, but which is your personal supercomputer these days, right? Mm -hmm. So how does that work? It's similarly simple in, in theory, of course. You have uh, the same loop, where's the pointer here, and you, instead of writing OpenMP parallel 4, <coughs> you write before the next block OpenMP target, and then as we are writing C, our favorite programming language, and not Fortran, which would have made that easier, uh, you need to actually specify the 
size of the data are these pointers point to because the compiler can't know, right? So these are arrays indexed from 0 to n minus 1, but it wants n, and from 0 to n minus 1 again. And you need to tell it <coughs> that it has to copy the data pointed to by x to the device, to the target, and the data pointed to by y also to the device and also at the end read it back from the device. Right, so e each of the target offload compute involves data movement. It involves data movement from, you, from your host CPU to the offload device. That makes, uh, that adds a quite overhead to the, the, to the loop. And you need to account for that to only offload really profitable operations. If you have many computations on the same data, then it's eventually profitable to offload. <coughs> so um, when you compile that, you can, you need to specify dash f openmp because we are dealing with openmp, and you uh, specify the target you want to offload to. Um, for example, dash offload equals default, then you get the default configured offload device for the compiler, as it was like, for example, shipped on SLES. And for uh, some offload targets, uh, you can uh, specify options to the code generator for the offload target with the dash offload options option. For example, if you target a specific device, which is um, sort of mandatory for the, the AMD GPUs. And what works is that you can offload for multiple targets. So if you have a system where you have a NVIDIA GPU and a AMD GPU, you can produce offload code for both of them. <clears throat> but currently, we cannot offload, GCC cannot offload to um, different kinds of the same accelerator. So if you have two different generation AMD cards in your system, then you can't create offload code for both of those. That's kind of a drive driver thing limitation that it's, nobody was e eager enough to fix that. So what's the requirement to then run uh, such kind of executable that you build with the with the compiler. Uh, on the NVIDIA side, uh, the GCC compiled executables, they need the CUDA runtime. That's the libcuda.so.1. Um, and you need, of course, hardware that's supported by CUDA. Um, I think we, we started uh, packaging the compute offload for NVIDIA with GCC 7, which is the system compiler of SLE 15. And it's even enabled there, so you could in theory use it. And I've tested it on a GTX 1650, which is quite old these days, but it's the only one I have available. Um, on the AMD side, you need the HSA runtime. That is actually part of the open source Rockham stack. But uh, you can also, as it's open source, you can also compile the HSA runtime separately. It, it doesn't have many dependencies, so it's a quite small part of the, the Rockham stack that you then need. And uh, there's uh, support for offloading to RDNA 2 and RDNA 3, but only specific models that we are able to test so far. <coughs> And uh, there's also support for older NVIDIA graphics card of the Fiji generation, but probably nobody has the, those anymore. And um, AMD has a different architecture for the compute offloads in their supercomputers. That's called cDNA, and that can also be targeted. That's a, what if you look at uh, AMD marketing, it's the MI250, MI300X stuff they uh, have in, in, the, in the current supercomputers. So I tested that on uh, RDNA 2 only uh, with a separate graphics card. 
and the iGPU you find in your Zen 4 CPUs. That's actually the nice thing that everybody who has a Zen 4 CPU has an offload device available that you can target with GCC. With the iGPU, it's of course not very powerful, but it's, it's good for testing, at least. So, uh, the HSI runtime, I um, actually updated there. There were packages for the HSI runtime in the Science GPU Rockham uh, subproject in the OpenSUSE build service, and I updated that uh, in autumn to the then latest Rockham version. There, there were attempts to, to package the full Rockham stack, but it's a really huge number of packages, and I don't think we ever have succeeded doing that. But the, the Rockham stack uh, is available as RPM packages from AMD for, I think, slash 15, SP4, and 5 now. And I'm not sure if there are tumbleweed packages. I don't think so. But, but usually, uh, the packages the vendors provide work on newer systems as well. So for example, the CUDA, you can, you can install the CUDA runtime which they ship for SLE 15, you can install it on Tumbleweed, and it should work. Of course, not supported, but it should work, basically. Um, and, and you only need, for the, for the um, AMD offload, you only need the libhsa runtime 64 package, which is basically a single shared library, just similar to the libcuda, which you only need. And if you then want to, to offload, you should install GCC 14, because that's the, the first compiler I really tested it from the packaging side. And you need to install the uh, cross AMD GCN GCC 14 package, which, which provides the offload capability. So that's not automatically installed, even though there is kind of a dependency, as if you enable the option, it will look for the compiler, and if it doesn't find it, you get a weird error. But I don't want to force everybody to install all the offload cross-compilers. So it's kind of an optional, uh, a, a not written down RPM dependency. You install, you install that, and uh, then you can compile your uh, OpenMP test with offloading by just a regular compile with, you need to enable OpenMP. You need to specify the offload target, which is AMD GCN, AMD HSA. Nobody can remember that, but if you type anything there, it will tell you, uh, well, that's not supported. I know this and that. And then you know which one to pick. <laughs> <laughs> so don't ask me why, why they choose this thing. And then for, for the AMD thing, you um, always need to specify the actual submodel of your compute chip. Uh, so the GFX uh, 1036 is the one that's in the Zen 4 CPUs, right? And uh, GFX 1030, that's the, the, the other one I tested. And then there's the RNA3, RNA it's, I think, 13, 6, and something. But it will also tell you all the models if you mistype something there. So again, so always specify something, and it will tell you. If you specify the wrong one, it will later, the HSA runtime will later tell you, well, you produced some, uh, some, some code that I can't execute. So it will complain. Um, in, in, the, in the Rockham stack, there's the tool which is called Rockham Info, which will basically list all your available accelerator devices. And there it also tells you this magic identification of the device. Uh, the Rockham Info tool is not separately packaged in the, in the science project, I think. So for that one, you would need to install at least parts of the, the Rockham stack from AMD. I hope at, that at some point um, we'll get at least the runtime into factory. It can't happen for the NVIDIA side, of course, but it, it might happen for the AMD side because we eventually may want to have that for the how is it called now, uh, through the Linux base one thing? 
<laughs> you remember in the morning marketing something the, the thing which is not called alp the thing which is not called alp right that's good yeah okay so how how does it uh, look on the nvidia side so as i said you need the cuda runtime uh, the cuda runtime is proprietary uh, it's it's shipped in these nvidia compute g whatever packages um, and you either need a proprietary kernel driver or I would guess that it, you, it works with the open source kernel driver if you have a, a recent enough uh, graphics card. Um, and in, in addition to the compiler, you need to install the corresponding cross compiler for the NVPTX offload. Um, so compared to the, the, the GCN offload for the AMD hardware, GCC targets this intermediate PTX, which is a virtual ISA for NVIDIA. And LibCUDA later takes the PTX and translates it to the real instructions for the graphics card. But that's a proprietary step. And the ISA is proprietary, so yeah, that's the best we can do. <clears throat> so which also means that even if you have the open source kernel driver, you still need the closed source CUDA runtime, right? So you always need at least that piece to do any compute offload, which means it's a no-go for the thing that's not called ALP anymore. Um, uh, similar to, to the AMD offload, you can control shader model and architecture with offload options. But it's, it's actually not, not necessary because they are magically translating missing capabilities in their PTX to hardware compiler. But I would guess that if you match up the, the features exactly that you eventually get better performance. As I, I, I was only testing this on a GTX 1650, which is a graphics card that doesn't work with the open source driver, which means I, I didn't actually test the open source driver. But I, I used the, also for the, for the AMD side, the, the, the driver that we ship with SLE 15. So I didn't use there. So the Rockham stack comes with an updated kernel driver, but you don't need that. You can just use the existing one. Maybe with more problems, who knows? But it, it worked for me. So we are not missing anything there. So. Then you have selected your device, you compiled your application. What do you do now? So usually you, you want to know, was my GPU used now or not, right? Because that's always, it, it, it won't tell you, maybe it's not faster and you suspect, oh, maybe the GPU wasn't used. Um, all of uh, OpenMP is controlled with environment variables. So you can select the, the device to offload to. For example, if you have multiple graphics cards, they will all have magic numbers. You can just guess a number at that point. Uh, in theory, so there's, there's a library, an OpenAP library. There's interfacing for querying, and you get some sort of description, strings. And you can do a better guess in that case. Um, at least the, the GCC libgomp doesn't ship any tools that like would query the runtime and list devices or something like that. At least I'm not aware of that. So you have to program that yourself. But of course, uh, CUDA and uh, AMD provide this. So I thought it was the Rockham info on the AMD side. And there's probably something on the CUDA side as well. Um, and you can actually force the offload to, to materialize. So basically, your program will exit with an error when something didn't work. So when, when the, the OpenMP runtime runs into one of these OpenMP target loops, it will try to initialize the device. If there's none, it will execute a fallback on your host CPU. And the program doesn't notice, right? It just will run as if there was no, no OpenMP. And you won't notice as well. But if you specify the OpenMP 
target offload equals mandatory. In that case, if it would run the, the CPU fallback code, you get an error instead and your program terminates, which is good for debugging, but not a good default behavior. Uh, and of course, you can also disable the offload in case you're like you have an image manipulation program and you always get strange artifacts and you suspect you did something wrong with the offload, you can uh, set it to disabled and if then everything is, looks fine, then it's probably a problem with the offloading, right? And uh, the, the default is the default, basically. Use the accelerator when possible and otherwise fall back to the CPU. Then specifically to GCC, or rather it's OpenMP runtime, you can set a, a GOMP debug equals one, then it will spit out a lot of debug messages on the standard out or error, I would have to check. <clears throat> like what devices it is found, if there is any problem with, for example, the, the offload initialization, it will actually say what happened and not only about your program. So that's a pretty nice feature for debugging. So on the, on the AMD side, and probably also on the CUDA side, I wasn't able to quickly find something. You can um, do a similar thing like the OpenMP default device. Uh, if you have the Rockham info, and it, it, it basically enumerates your accelerator devices, you can uh, restrict what the libgomp sees to a specific, a specific device. Um, if you want to just offload to a specific device. Uh, and there is for the uh, libgomp, for the GCC libgomp, uh, HSA targeting, there's an, a, an other debug, a GCN debug. If you set that to equal one, you get a lot of diagnostics regarding to the specifics of the uh, AMD runtime setup from the libgomp. So if you suspect anything is going wrong there, then that will get you more information uh, compared to the GOMP debug. So, um, as I told you in the slide a little bit before, uh, you need to have a meaningful workload to do the offload, otherwise it will be slower because you need to copy all the data onto the device and you need to copy all the results back. Uh, so I try to think about what's a workload I could present, and I couldn't really come up with, with an example. So I, I, back at university, I did HPC. That's, of course, the classical application for this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I, I looked into Spec OpenMP, which has nice examples of computational fluid dynamics and whatever, but it's, it's, it doesn't fit on the slide. <clears throat> so I thought, well, what could be interesting these days? That's not that. Let's switch. Ah, AI. Yes, of course, AI. Why not? I mean, you have AI is matrix multiplication. So I'm talking about the AI inference step and not about the training. The training is complicated, which is also matrix multiplication, but still it's complicated. So it's basically the AI inference. And then I thought, well, OpenMP, ah, yeah, well, okay. You don't really want to do matrix multiplication with OpenMP. Do I say this anywhere there? No. So, yeah, first line. So, uh, so the training is, is more complicated because you, you define your AI model and everything like that. This OpenMP isn't really targeted for that. If you experiment with training and stuff like that, you use TensorFlow or whatever. But when you then want to deploy this, like to your mobile phone or to your laptop, you want something simpler. You basically just have the weights and uh, the set up of the model, and you then do matrix multiplications up to the end, and then all is good. But <clears throat> writing matrix multiplication code that is actually fast executing on your GPU is, is really hard, because you are memory bound, 
at the front and at the end, right? And it has been done before, so why would you repeat doing that? And, but yeah, you can do it. Maybe it's fun. Um, but yeah, but really you should use BLAS, so there's the generalized matrix multiplication in, in BLAS or LAPAC, and probably LAPAC, the GEM, G-E-M-M, -M. and there are variants for that in, Kudlib, uh, in, in CUDA and also in Rockham and probably also in the library that's provided by Intel. I didn't talk about Intel at all. Intel also has GPUs. <laughs> but GCC can't target the, they can't target them. Uh, so they have highly tuned algorithms, right? They have probably 64 variants and one targeting exactly your graphics card, which would probably, you, you can't beat that with OpenMP, right? So if you really do it, then use that. Um, and for the uh, AI interference in your application, you find something like uh, micro tensor or how it's spelled. That, that one is for mobile devices or something else that, that you basically export your TensorFlow or the, the other TensorFlow that's not called TensorFlow, PyTorch. You export your model and your data and then you have the inference engine that's optimized for your small device which doesn't have all the Python dependencies and whatever, which is just a small C binary, because it's really only multiplication and addition, and it's very small, hopefully, right? So, but AI, it could be fun. So I, I will try a demo quickly. I only have 10 minutes left, and I hope I can somehow No, not find. I want it bigger. Or can you see it? Then I keep it that way. Can you read it? Very small. Very small. Uh, well, let me let me quickly try. Advanced. What? Oh, yeah, right. Zoom. Zoom. So now it works, right? So this is a matrix multiplication kernel. It's, it's already sort of optimized because I, I put the, the memory write of the accumulation into the result element uh, out of the loop, right? And the, the simplest thing you can do here, of course, is use the thread level parallelism, right? So I can do... Oh, you can't. That's, that's, that's because of the zooming, right? Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, I'm, I need to, to turn off the full screen. <coughs> For some reason, it's not there. Yeah, now it's there. So I, I first do it this way. So that uh, multiplies uh, two. Ha <laughs> uh, You see, the, the, the main program uh, measuring time is bigger than the actual kernel. And so it, it runs it only once, so this is really a single run of the max, matrix multiply, which shows you it's not exactly fast. But I put the OpenMP parallel 4 there, but I didn't enable FOpenMP. So when I do that, oh, wow. So that's not my laptop. <laughs> it's actually a, a, a CPU with 12 cores and 24 threads, and it will automatically use 24 threads in that case. So that's nice, right? So what did I... Well, let's keep that and... Try that one. So the, the ZIMD only works on the innermost loops, really. You can, you can trick it somehow to, 
apply to more, but usually that doesn't work very well. Um, but you can see that the complication there is there's a, a reduction there. So let's see. Do you, uh, do you remember how long it took without? It was like three point whatever, four seconds. Oh, damn. What happened? So what happens is that if you look here, uh, the, the, the memory access in the innermost loop, it's not continuous in the array A. And that's, of course, bad, because for the vectors, you need to do like four scalar loads and put it into a vector. And yeah, that's of, uh, it, not profitable, as we can see here. So to fix that, an old trick of matrix multiplication is to provide one of the input matrices transposed. Right, if you have it transposed, then it will be the fast dimension in the innermost loop for both arrays. And then it would actually nicely vectorize. So we, I didn't apply that trick because I wanted to demo offloading, right? <laughs> so let me find the pre-defined pre thing. So, uh, so this is um, how you, in theory, should get some speed up, right? Um, so I, I, I need to map the input arrays and the output array, as I told you in the slides. But then I need to apply more magic, because the GPU actually has multiple processors and is in those processes also ZIMD, right? So, and in OpenMP, this is kind of, you say, teams, that's the processors, and you want to distribute to that, and then it's also parallel that will apply the ZIMD or thread level parallelism. So NVIDIA says they have threads, AMD has ZIMD, but it, it, it's the same thing in OpenMP. Um, yeah, and then you tell the OpenMP that, okay, I want to not only distribute this thing across the GPU in the, across the first dimension, but across the first two. So I say collapse two. That makes one continuous loop out of the, the outer loop, of the, out of the outer, outer two loops, and uses that to split up the work. Uh, so that returns in that. So the, the inner loop, that's a reduction. It's not covered here because it's not a perfect nest. So all these do not apply to the inner loop. So basically, each thread on the GPU will execute this loop serially. That's not good, but yeah, I, I put here the ZIMD reduction thing, but it, it doesn't help, actually. But I want to quickly demo that, and then we are out of time anyway. So I uh, compile that, and then <clears throat> I execute it. I, I'm using the uh, mandatory thing, and I want to have it finished, so I make it smaller. And it takes 0.7 seconds. That looks fast, right? But I can make it faster by disabling the offload. <laughs> So the, it's, the workload is, is too, too small, for one. Uh, for a second, my integrated GPU in the, the Zen 4 is, is not very powerful, right? And um, the, the, the way I structured the matrix multiplication with OpenMP is far from optimal. So if you want to do optimal matrix multiplication for GPUs, you want to tile your loop, so you have your three-level loop nest. You want an, another two levels to walk over small tiles because the, the matrix multiplication basically can be decomposed into the multiplication of a matrix with a lot of sub-matrices if you just work it out in the mathematical way. Um, and then you can walk over very small memory regions, and GPUs are good when they have, individually when they work on memory that's not, not the same between all the, their sub-CPUs, right? And then it gets, 
because then otherwise they get uh, cache conflicts. Uh, and, and that's what the Kublas gem does. And they are also then can use the matrix acceleration cores for AI, which are mixed precision, which is also not easy to use from uh, OpenMP. So it's, it's a nice application for offload, but not really for OpenMP. So I'm still lacking the good OpenMP example. But otherwise, if there are no questions, I've been told I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>